All right, so solving rational equations, guys. When we have two rationals set equal to each other with common denominators, all you have to do is cross out the common denominators. Okay? Let me pull it up real quick. So if they have the same denominator, you can just cross them out and just work on the numerators. And you set them equal to each other, you solve like normal, and you check for extraneous solutions. So basically you plug your answers back in. So if you have two rationals without common denominators, we can cross multiply. We solve and check for extraneous solutions. So we just want to make sure that our solutions don't give us a zero in the denominator. All right, so if we're looking at number one, they don't have the same denominator, but we can cross multiply. So we're going to have three times x minus seven equals two times five x. And so when we distribute that through, we get three x minus 21 equals 10 x. We don't need to divide yet. How do we get the x's all on one side? We put them on one side. By doing what? We subtract three x. Right. Subtract 3x, we get negative 21 is 7x, so x is negative, negative 3. If we plug in negative 3, when we're doing our check, we would get 3 over 5 times negative 3 equals 2 over negative 3 minus 7. So you end up getting negative one-fifth, one-fifth. What we're really looking for is to make sure we don't have a zero in the denominator. So that means this x equals negative three works. All right, number two. We have different denominators. So we can cross multiply. So 1 times 11x plus 8, we just leave the 11x plus 8. On the other side, we have x times 2x plus 5. So what's x times 2x plus 5? 2x squared. Yep, 2x squared plus 5x, and we still have 11x plus 8 on the other side. So what should I do here to solve? So, kind of a little bit of everything you guys have said. We want to move, when we have something squared, when we have x squared, we want to move everything over to one side and set the other side equal to zero. So we're going to subtract 11x and we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. So we're going to have zero equals 2x squared and it'll be minus 6x minus 8. And so now we'll have to factor. So in our factoring, the 2x squared minus 6x minus 8, first of all, is there a GCF? What is it? Uh, yes. 2. So this is 2 times x squared minus 3x minus 4. How would we factor that part? Uh, a times C. A times C will be our two factors. Negative 2 and 2 would add up to negative 4. Negative 4 and positive 1. Because they that multiplies to be negative 4 and adds up to negative 3. And so now how would I solve for x? Set them both equal to zero. Do I need to worry about this two at all? Uh, no. Because no. we could divide both sides by two and it would be gone. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to set x minus four equal to zero. 
and x plus 1 equal to 0. And so our two answers would be 4 and negative 1. Now, when we plug those in, will we get a 0 in the denominator with either number? No, because what we have, if we did it two times four plus five, that would give us 13. Um, 11 times four plus eight would give us 52. They're both, that's fine. So that one would work. When we did, if we did negative one, two times negative one plus five gives us three. 11 times negative 1 plus 8 gives us negative 3. So that's okay. As long as your denominators are not equal to 0, it works. That's what I, when I'm looking for a check, plug in the numbers and make sure it doesn't equal 0. Okay? All right, I want you guys to try so, next four. number 3. Try number 3. Zoom in on it. Do you want me to show have number two available so you can see what we did? Or just zoom in a lot on number three? All right, looks like a lot of you are done with number three or well on your way. So, um, let's see. Maddie, what was the first thing you did on number three? Cross you cross multiplied, okay. So, that gave you what? 2x minus 3 times 1 and 5 times negative 2x. So, what did you end up once you cross multiplied. All right, so 15 minus 6x equals 2x minus 3. Sean, what would be our next step?
Okay, so what are you going to do to do that? You subtract 15 multiplied. Okay. And then you subtract the x, and then you divide by 8, or negative 8, and then you get 9 fourths. So we're subtracting 2x from both sides and 15 from both sides. So we have negative 8x equals negative 18. Yes, and equals 9 fourths. And then we get x equals 9 over 4. Good. When we check our answer, does it work? Does it leave us with a zero in the denominator? No. No. So we did 2 times 9 over 4 minus 3. That's going to give us 18 over 4 minus 3, which is like 6 over 4. That's fine. And 5 minus uh, 2 times 9 over 4 leaves us with 5 minus 9 halves, which is 1 half. So they both work. Questions on that one? It looked like most of you were getting, I saw most of you either getting negative 18 over negative 8 or positive 18 over positive 8. Either way, it was fine. All right. Um, Becca, if we look at number 4, what should we do? Over one. It's over one. It's over one. Okay. So we still cross multiply. So what goes on one side and what goes on the other side? Um, x minus six goes first. What do I multiply the x minus six by? One. Are you sure? Or four. Are you sure? Oh, do you multiply it by? Mm hmm And then it's the 1 times well, 4. Yeah. All right, so Hayden, what would this multiply out to be? Okay. It all equals four. So then, because we have an x squared, Kylie, what do we need to do? What do we do on number two when we found out we had an x squared? What do we do with everything? Where do we move it? Who can help her? We want to set it equal to zero. So that means we're combining like terms. So we x squared minus 9x, but then we also want to subtract 4 from both sides. So x squared minus 9x minus 14 equals zero. Joseph, what would the x squared minus 9x minus 14 factor out to be? Well, work through the a times c. What's our a value? 1. What's our c value? So we have negative 14. What two numbers multiply to be negative 14 and add up to negative 9? Is it going to be, or sorry, positive 14, sorry. My bad. So what two numbers? Multiply to be 14 and add up to negative 9. Negative 7 and negative 2, yeah. So x minus 7 times x minus 2 equals 0. I feel like you guys know enough to know what, what can 7 be equal to then. What are the two things it's equal to? 7 and 2. If you need to, you can just write out the extra step. x minus 7 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0. So when we look, we only have one denominator we have to worry about. 7 minus 3 is 4. 
2 minus 3 is negative 1. So they both are good. So x equals 7 and x equals 2. Okay, number 5. This one's a little more difficult. What do we do? What did we do last week when we had factor it before? So factor before we do cross multiplication. So Ryan, are you able to factor x squared plus four x plus three? Or no. You can. It's like three and one. Three and one. X plus three times x plus one. All right, so now if we look back up at the top, if we have denominators that are equal to each other, cross them out. So what that means is cross out the x plus 1s. Does everybody understand? When you have common parts of your denominator, cross them out. So we get rid of both x plus 1s. Well, this is only when we're solving. We get rid of both x plus 1s, and now we can cross multiply. So when we're cross multiplying, Will, what am I multiplying the 5x plus 4 by? 1. So that means I have 5x plus 4 on one side, and Troy, what will I have on the other side? 3x to the second power of Right, so 3x times this x plus 3, which he said was 3x squared plus 9x, and that's equal to 5x plus 4. So, Olivia, what should I do from there? So remember, whenever we have a quadratic, that means something to x, x squared, we want to get everything on one side and zero on the other. So how should I do that? Well, we want everything on over. So whatever side the x squared, positive x squared is on, we want to take everything to that side. So instead of subtracting the 9x, which one should I subtract? Subtract the 5x and the, and the 4. So 0 equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 4. <clears throat> and so here, when we use our a times c method, what are we doing? So 3 times negative 4 gives us and what two numbers multiply by negative 12 and add up to positive 4? 6 and negative 2. So we would have an x plus 6 and an x minus 2. But what do I need to do to both of those? Set them equal to 0. Well, I set them equal to 0, but before that. Divide them by 3. Divide them each by 3, the a value. So x plus 6 becomes x plus 2. What's x minus 2 over 3 become? 3x minus 2. And so now we set them both equal to 0. What would be my answers? Right. x equals negative 2 and x equals 2 thirds. So if you guys haven't noticed this yet, if you look, when we do our division part, dividing by 3, we get x minus 2 thirds, right? and we slide that 3 in front. Well, when you want to know what x is equal to, it's basically, you could use that equation there, set it equal to 0, so then you know it's just, oh, x equals 2 thirds, so you don't have to, do, to add 2 and then divide by 3 again. You can just add the 2 thirds. So that makes it a little simpler. And then, we already know, they both check out, because when we plug it in, 
These were our factors. Negative 2 plus 3 is negative 1, or not positive 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. When we plug in 2 thirds, neither one of them is going to have a 0. Questions on that one? So remember, if you have a trinomial or something else, factor it out first because we can cancel out common denominator parts. All right, last one. I want you guys to try this one, and then we'll come to it. You guys try number six. Thank you. Can you search? Mm -hmm. Make sure you factor out the denominator first.
All right, let's look at this one, last one. All right, so before we start, yeah, what do we, how do we factor out the x squared minus 4? What's x squared minus 4 factor out to be? x minus 2 and x plus 2. If you don't factor it out, you're going to end up with like an x cubed, and it's going to make your life a little miserable. So now what can I cancel out? Yeah, both denominators have an x minus 2. So this is where solving and like adding and subtracting are different. All right, so now we can cross multiply. So we'd have 3x plus 6 equals x plus 2 times x plus 1. And so now, to save even more time, can we factor 3x plus 6 out? What's the GCF? Three. Three. So you could have three times x plus two equals x plus two times x plus one. So if you have x plus two multiplied on both sides, you can divide it out. The x plus twos would go away. So then I would just have three equals x plus one x equals 2. And so, will 2 work? No. x can't be 2, so we have, this is an extraneous solution. And some of you uh, did it another way where I think you ended up with like x, you got an x equals 2 and negative 2. Neither one of those works, right? Because you plug them both in to the denominator, you get 0. I think on this quiz, since I'm, I'm guess I think a lot of people probably did poorly. I'm gonna let everyone do corrections. Yay. So once I get it back, I should. I'm hoping to have it back to you so I can hand it back on Wednesday, so that you have the long break that you can do corrections on it. So even if you got a 90, I will let you do corrections. You get half the credit back. All right. So everyone can do corrections up to as high a grade as they can get getting half the credit back. All right, that's all I have for today.